sports movie I'm pumped to see this year. It's Red Army, the documentary about the Soviet hockey team that opens January 30th at the Fifth Avenue for a short engagement. Tony, your thoughts on the Red Army? Well, obviously, it was a political machine, really. It was uh, designed to maximize uh, Soviet propaganda values, and of course, they put everything into it at great cost to the players. Uh, I remember speaking long, uh, many, many times with Igor Larionov off the record when he was here in Vancouver playing for the Canucks about uh, his time with Red Army, his time under Tikhonov, his, you know, like he'd have to work uh, ten and a half months at the camp training and playing. He would only get occasional passes to go and see his family. Um, Igor, of course, profoundly resented this as all the players did. But, you know, practicing the way they did and playing against many other really solid teams in Russia, uh, which they did at the time, made them an extremely well-oiled machine. And, of course, by the time the Olympics came along, we saw what they could do, like in Calgary in the 88 Olympics, how dominant they were. Um, you know, certainly the miracle on ice in, in 80 was, you know, against the flow. It was one of those things. They didn't win it. But for the most part, they were extremely dominant in all international competitions. And they had the best players in the world by far. I remember going to rendezvous in 87 again, when uh, the Red Army, Soviet Red Army, took on a team of NHL All-Stars in the middle of the season in Quebec City. And uh, they were breathtaking. I remember seeing Larionov, Krutov, and Makarov, their top line. And then, you know, when it was learned that they were coming to the Vancouver Canucks, Krutov and Larionov, you thought, well, Vancouver's plans are, are set for the next little while as long as these guys last, because they were the best players in the world at the time. But whether it was Larionov and Krutov or whether it was the players who had come from che the then Czechoslovakia, uh, it wasn't necessarily an easy transition for these guys. No, not at all. As you know, uh, Jonathan, the Czechs preceded the Russians by seven years here in Vancouver. Bubla and Lenka coming in 1981. Uh, Bubla got hurt that first year, which was the 82 run to the Stanley Cup final. Uh, and so he wasn't around actually during the glory days of that 82 season, but he went on to play extremely well for the Canucks. Linkus didn't stay nearly as long. He was a chain smoker. Uh, I think he was a lot older than the 31 that he was listed at when he arrived. Uh, he didn't have a whole lot. Bubla played pretty well, but again, he all his best years were, were spent playing for the Czech national team at the time. But both outstanding characters. As everyone knows, they had a huge tournament for Ivan Linka. Uh, he scored some memorable goals for the Canucks in that 82 run. Uh, but they had very similar experiences, very, very difficult. I remember Stan Smeal telling me a story about the first time he took Igor and his wife to a supermarket here in Vancouver. And Igor's wife went absolutely crazy when they got to the supermarket. She tried to buy everything. She was firing stuff into the basket. She had a mountain of food in the basket until Stan got there, who'd been showing Igor around, and assured her that all that food would be there the next day when she came back, if she chose to come back, that it wasn't all going to disappear from the shelves. They couldn't believe their eyes at how much food there was around in our stores. Well, Red Army looks super intriguing. Opening January 30th at the 5th Avenue. This weekend at provincesports.com, you can read columnist Scott Stimson, who will be writing more about the movie. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Jonathan.